Shalom and good evening. This is uh, Maurice Sklar, and uh, even though officially I am uh, on vacation, I suppose, or just resting, uh, I just missed you. I missed y'all a lot, and and I thought, you know, at least I can do uh, take about an hour and just uh, just read it. And it blesses me, and it blesses you, and just, so this is not an official <laughs> Beit Rafa service. I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, just here to just take an hour or so. And I just wanted to continue. And I said, "Well, I'm gonna, I want to read it." And I said, "Well, why don't I just read it out loud?" And that, and so I'll share it with. So this is, uh, I'm gonna continue with the father and his family of E.W. Kenyon here, and and I figured it would encourage you tonight. Uh, no politics tonight, no uh, no prophetic that I plan on. Now, that doesn't mean that God can do it. And honestly, I have taken a break for a little while from the news as well, and just, just getting in the Word and resting. I <clears throat> I think the enemy tried to put the, the, uh, the China virus on me or something. I don't know. My friends, a couple of... Uh, have, feel like that you know anyway it it might just be that I was uh just run down but <clears throat> I'm feeling so much better and I said well I can take an hour and do this but so officially though it's just this is just a uh a, 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 our reading hour and what I eventually thinking of doing is uh <clears throat> making that into a, a, a different time of day. You know, we'll do an hour, uh, different things, Bible reading and stuff like that. And since I, I've, I remember how it helped me when I had, I would keep things on, you know, either the Bible or something like that, or just, just hear, hearing, I have this on, actually I have this on, on CD, believe it or not, and other, other of E.W. Kenyon's books and, course uh kenneth hagan i i love the old kenneth hagan uh tapes and messages and <clears throat> just to edify you and things like that and and uh, brother copeland as well i haven't listened to him recently as quite as much but i do anyway so well you know what i can say hello that's all right isn't it and we'll start in about five minutes or so and i'll go for about an hour or so good evening and Hello to Cheryl Morrison, bless you, hun. Glad to have you. And Ricky and Ginger Rios Baez are with us. Praise the Lord, shalom. And shalom to Marilyn Warner. And uh, hello, brother. Hello, brother and sister. <laughs> Ricky and Ginger. Marilyn says, good evening. Joan Champlin, bless you. Glad to have you. And Lucia Fermenter is on, and hello, hello, Danny Pendleton, and uh, and Lady Lori McLean. Good to have you too. I don't know why I called you Lady there, but I think you're one of God's God's special ladies. So call you Lady, <laughs> Ricky and Ginger. We miss you too. Well, you know, I I just needed a little bit of a little bit of a break just because I'm human and you know we've had quite a schedule and there's been an enormous amount of pressure too I I think spiritually and and uh, all the political things and I I feel the weight of that too and and um, you know we we have a very intense uh, uh, first week of January I believe but hallelujah I'm not I just uh you know, I used to say this, uh, I, people don't even know what that is anymore. It's just kind of funny, but you know, when I lived in New York, they used to have, well, I'm sure they still do, the cabs, you know, the old cabs, they used to have the old cabs and they, you know, when they were done, they, they would say for hire if they're ready, you know, the, the light, well, and then it would say off duty, you know, it used to say off duty. And I said, after I lived, the anointing would lift or something like that in a meeting, I said, well, I'm off duty, off duty cab. <laughs> no, no, not, not picking up anybody. 
And sometimes that worked, sometimes it didn't. Of course, the Lord is always there, but we have to, you know, we have to pace ourselves. One of the things that I have learned is if I, if I have, um, if there's a few warning, warning signals in my body, like if I'm feeling, you know, really fatigued or, uh, or if I'm, <clears throat> you know, have some, some, uh, uh, symptoms or something and I know, okay, I better take care of it, I better rest. Well, that's what I did. So, uh, after the, uh, pageant, that's what I was doing. And, and uh, Lucia says, hi, and, oh, missed you. Well, I, I have missed you. I, I, I just, uh, it, uh, there's something, there's, there's nothing like this connection that, uh, that, uh, that this has brought, uh, to me and to, to y'all since uh, some since March and <clears throat> Emmanuel is probably my time day keeper. We're somewhere 260 something like that. I don't know how many. <clears throat> I thought, well, I'll do it for 100 days and then, no, no, 200 days, no, <laughs> just keep going. So I, I yeah. Uh, hello, John. Uh, John Milkey is with us, and Betty Gruninger, bless you. Uh, hello to Betty Lambert, who's watching. And good evening, Bob and Sandy Pyle are with us. Praise the Lord. And Sean Powell from Tulsa, Jerusalem, the holy city, as <laughs> she's watching. And Grace Cavalero Hood. Welcome, glad to have you this evening, and Doris, Doris Willett, and probably her husband down in Florida, they're, they're, uh, <clears throat> she's on this evening, and, and hallelujah, and Jim is there as well, hello Jim, good to have you, Pauline Pope, welcome, hello, hello to Wendy Bryan, Warm, warm California. Oh, Pennsylvania. Wendy is from Pennsylvania. Yes, yes, it is cold this time of year, and uh, there was some uh, 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 <clears throat> snow. There's been quite a bit of snowfall. Uh, that that's pretty common around this time of year, but uh, I don't think there's been a whole lot of global warming or cooling. It's just winter time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some things uh, God made to stay pretty much the same, and, and they are, and, and God made this planet for human beings, not the other way around. Hallelujah. So, we're, we're, no. All right, no. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. We are in a, oh, here, Lori is, oh, Lori says we are in a quiet, silent waiting period. You're right, exactly. Exactly, because you, you, you have to, right now, uh, there's, and, and the thing about it is, I mean, you could go search, you know, your favorite people that I like to watch certain prophetic voices and I like to keep up, but you know what? I needed a break from that too. So I, I'm actually not very well informed tonight, except to tell you, I think that the God is always the same. He doesn't change. And, uh, <laughs> if he said it, he's going to do it. So I trust, I trust in the Lord with all my heart. Lean not on my own understanding. It's a time to wait and trust and let God uh, do it his way, his timing. Hallelujah. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Yes, feels like waiting for a birth. Well, you know what? Sometimes that can be pretty painful. <laughs> Travail, yeah. Well, we've been travailing, I think. Oh, hallelujah. So, Dorothy Warner, hello. And Joanne Peace is with us. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Joanne. And, uh, and uh, Judy Maureen, hello, dear. And Barbara Krim. And Nancy Russo, hello, Nancy. And Mindy Abrams. Good name, Abrams. Yvette Diaz, welcome tonight. Shalom. Jane Waldridge and Jeff Box or Bakis. 
Glad to have you, Scott. Scott, easy to remember your name. Always see Scott, Scott. Praise the Lord. Jan Mullins, bless you. And Julie Meyer, yes, I am feeling better. Did you like we, Devorah made this amazing, uh, uh, amazing uh, uh, minestrone soup. I just had some and we brought it over to Walt and Julie because they were feeling a little little under the weather and oh but that that soup Devorah's soup will heal you even if you're not sick especially the chicken soup but it's it's a minestrone too hallelujah wow can she cook anyway bless you Julie yes I am feeling I'm feeling better I I I've been just resting I didn't even I didn't even get out of my pajamas yesterday I just I just took it easy. I watched a movie though last night, and honestly, I can't recommend it. It's uh, uh, you know the, the the Israeli Wonder Woman lady. It was a beautiful woman, but I I, I couldn't I couldn't it, it's it's like I couldn't follow it. It's full of devils and full of full of uh, you know. I don't know, some antichrist fellow gets up and says, make a wish and and everything. I don't know, it just, it just too chaotic and too much violence and I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, you know, they've got every gizmo and special effect and, you know, it, it, it's like these, these, these movies now, they're trying to outdo themselves, you know, to try to, how much can we, I mean, they put everything with the kitchen sink in it. I mean, every single, uh, you know, it's just overkill, too much. And I tell you what, I, you know what I like? You know what I watched two nights ago that I liked? I'm just telling, I'm just coming to you now, just, just Maury. I'm not any, being anything bad. I watched Casablanca, and I, that is still my very favorite. My very favorite, it's a work of art. I, what a great movie that is. Uh, and uh, I like the old movie. I we watched the TCM and the you know that sort of thing and I can't watch it. I honestly I just watched it because it was so the 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 Wonder Woman spectacular. I mean, yeah, but it's just too demonic. You know, the only thing I could think the whole time, of course, the the <laughs> prophetic part of me is all I can say, well, you know, the devil's trying to uh, just doing everything he can to to try to destroy the world and bring the tribulation. It's not time yet. He can't have it yet. And uh, But, you know, it's just, there's a desperation in the evil in the enemy's camp that uh, gives, gives it away to me. I mean, I just know. I have expectation for, I think 2021 is going to be wonderful. I really do. Uh, I just, I... I know I'm supposed to go, oh no, what are we gonna do? Oh. I mean, if, if we go by the, what the news is saying and what the, you know, and all the, I, I, but I have a real expectation of hope. I, I don't, it's not in my heart that that fear is coming from the outside and not from inside of me. And from inside of me, I, <clears throat> of course I've been, I've been listening to <laughs> different. <laughs> you listen to the 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 Lord and the Bible and the Word of God. It, it everything's wonderful in heaven. It really is. They're, they're they're having a great time down there. You know, have fun. And like I said, the best way to resist all this craziness. Don't watch that movie though. It, it's not worth it. It's just. And then I had to. Then I, you know, then I have to guess God to clean my mind out and get all that junk out of, you know, it's just not worth it. I just, I can't watch 95% of the movies they make now. Does that mean that I'm a, uh, I, maybe I'm just sensitive or, I don't know, it just seems evil to me. Uh, <clears throat> I love to be entertained, but I don't, I don't, I feel like I'm getting slimed. You know, like the the whole Gust, Gust, Ghostbusters movie. You know, the where they the the devil just you know the ghost is slime. I just feel slime. Like, 
So anyway, I, I have a, my recommendation is, yes, it has spectacular effects and all that stuff if you want, but, and she's beautiful. Uh, what a gorgeous Israeli woman. I mean, yeah, <laughs> but other than that, two thumbs down. <laughs> I don't like it. It didn't edify me in the least. <clears throat> All right, well, let's get started here, and let's hear some good news. And that's the one thing about what I love about Mr. Kenyon's books is, and he wrote this almost 100 years ago. Still just as true today, eternal truths. Jesus really did win. It's going to turn out just fine. <laughs> yeah. Some of you say, well, what's the word? What's God, what's God saying? He's saying, he's saying, uh, rest, relax, celebrate, um, and, and trust him. <laughs> no new revelations right now. Hold fast what you have and resist the fear. Don't, don't let the fear get down on in, inside of you. Amen. So here we go. Um, how did I? I want to make sure that I'm... Okay. <clears throat> this is the, the 12th chapter of our book, The Father and His Family, uh, The Story of Man's Redemption. And this is a quote from Julius Charles heart as we start here. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. The comforter in every part of his threefold work glorifies Messiah. In convincing of sin, he convinces us of the sin of not believing on him, on Christ. In convincing us of righteousness, he convinces us of the righteousness of Messiah, of that righteousness, which was made manifest in Messiah's going to the Father and which he received to bestow on all such as should believe in him. And lastly, in convincing of judgment, he convinced us that the prince of the world was judged in the life and by the death of Christ Thus throughout, Christ is glorified, and that which the Comforter shows to us relates in all its parts to the life and work of the incarnate Son of God, Julius Charles Hart. <clears throat> Chapter 12, The Holy Spirit. This has been called the age or dispensation of the Holy Spirit. When Yeshua was about to leave the disciples, he promised that he would send the Holy Spirit into the world to become their teacher, their guide, and their comforter. Do you know? Do you know the Holy Spirit? He's my best friend. Oh, he's a person, you know. He's not a wave or a force or a... He's, he's a person. He's very tender-hearted, too. Very... This coming being was going to have charge of the ministry and work of the church, still does. He was going to guide the church as a whole and guide its members as individuals. He was to overshadow the church and they were to walk in his presence. He was to come also into the individual members' bodies to take up his abode there so that he might govern his actions, think through his mind, love through his affections, and will through his will. His body was to be his permanent home. You see, the reason why there's so little of God's presence and power in the uh, 21st century church that we can see is because most of us don't know how to let let the Holy Spirit really take over and lead us and guide us. And he, that's what 
makes this walk a supernatural one. I'm not in just some old dead uh, fantasy religion. No, I have a living relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. Under the old dispensation, he had dwelt between the cherubim in the Holy of Holies. Now he is to dwell in the soul and spirit of man. This new tabernacle of flesh. First, I want you to notice that the Holy Spirit is a person. In Matthew 28, 19, Yeshua says, Go ye into all the world and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Here, Yeshua gives the Holy Spirit the same place, the same personality, and the same honor that he gives to the Father and to himself. In 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 14, But unto us God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. <clears throat> For who among men knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, <clears throat> the things of God none knoweth save the spirit of God. Now, if, if we were to leave it right there, we'd be in trouble. Well, yes, only God knows the mis mysteries. I don't know what... But it goes on to say, but we've been given the mind of the Spirit. We've been given. He lives in us. He'll tell us. He'll show us. He'll reveal to us even things to come. And he is our comforter, our helper. Oh, I love him. He's the one that is with us now. See, God the Father is in, seated in heaven. There's a place called heaven. There's a throne there. Hallelujah. And uh, God the Son, resurrected Lord of glory. Of course, God is one, uh, but he manifests in three persons. Uh, and he is one and yet three, like water is. I've told many times water exists in three uh, different states, but it's still water. <laughs> it could be liquid. You, you get it cold enough, it'll freeze, and it's solid, or it can be a gas. It, it, if you heat it up, uh, it, it can be a vapor, but it's still water. Well, God is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. <clears throat> but if you look at that, even that holiest of prayers, the Shema, that uh, the Jews, we, we, that's three times a day. <laughs> three times a day, that's interesting. In every service for the Orthodox, <clears throat> they say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. So we sanctify the name as being one, and yet he's in three persons right there. In that very, and you see that all through, you see that all through creation, you see that all through the Bible, you see this, this, there's a mystery in that. There's a book I have called, I think it's called, uh, <clears throat> I think it's called Holy Geometry. Someone gave that to me. It's just a, astonishing how, and numbers and geometry and, and how uh, God uses numbers. Seven is a big number. <laughs> uh, every number, uh, you know, every, many, and they, and they have meaning and Anyway, <clears throat> but I'm reading today. I'm trying to take a day off from preaching, but it's hard. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just, I just had to come on. And uh, you know, someone said, "Well, oh, Julie said, are you feeling better?" Yes, and yet um, I still not going to go full throttle. Okay, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> But I don't know how to do that. So it's all right. God will take care of me. <clears throat> all right. Now, 
It says here, For who among men knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of the man which is in him? <clears throat> Even so the things of God know, none knoweth save who? The spirit of God. Well, <clears throat> which things, now he continues, which things also we speak, <clears throat> not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but that but which the Spirit teacheth, combining spiritual things with spiritual words. <clears throat> now the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, and he cannot know them because they are spiritually understood. Here, the Spirit is the searcher of the deep things of God. What I was trying to say to you was, the Holy Spirit is right here on earth with us. He's the only one of the Trinity that actually is with us. And yet, most of the church world doesn't understand him, doesn't know him very well, and treats him like he's a wave or a force or a feeling or a goosebump or a, you know, or maybe he's some sort of a, you know, a, a fire or a dove or, well, he is like that, but he is, he, in him we live and move and have our being. Of course, that's in the Lord, but it's by the Spirit that we are joined to God and he talks to us, he speaks to us. We can't see him physically, but he is my best friend. The Holy Spirit, thank God, you know, I, I've been able to, to uh, be with men and women in the past that, that walked close with this, my precious, I, I, I have a love relationship with him and he can take over and he wants to, he wants to possess you and he comes with all of, he is God. And he comes with all of the wonderful, there's fruit of the Spirit. There's gifts of the Spirit. There, is, uh, there, there, there are uh, uh, attitudes of the Spirit. And we partake of that. We come into union with God. And so, in a way, you don't have, you don't, well, you don't have to wait to heaven to have a close communion with the Holy Spirit, He's with us right now. That's why you don't need to be afraid of seeing all these things coming in the darkness. Well, all those things are, God said they would come. Jesus said, in the world you would have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Let not your heart be troubled. Why? You? How do you not let your heart be troubled? You let your heart be troubled. Let the Holy Spirit fill you. Now, this is something that we don't really understand much. We were designed to be filled with uh, a spirit of worship all the time. We are to be, we are worshiping beings. So you, you can't exist in a state without worshiping. You, you're built you're fundamentally, constantly, whatever you're, you're serving or you're worshiping, well, the only, only God that you can worship without, is, it would not be evil, uh, wouldn't destroy you. It's either idols, which are really demons, or the precious person of the Holy Spirit. And he is holy. He's... He, and, and we are to be constantly filled with Him. And if you're filled with Him, hallelujah, there's no more room. There's no room to be... See, so what you got to be careful is, like when I watched that crazy movie last night, uh, you know, I'm not going to get filled with that. So I had to go, I said, Lord, get all the... I'm not... See, you can't let the spirit of the world fill you to where you, and it'll fill you with fear if you're not careful. Whatever you spend a lot of time looking at, studying, focusing your attention on, uh, it will 
it has a spirit with it and it will cause you to, <clears throat> it will either cause you to come closer to God or farther away. And there's a lot of distractions right now. But oh, be filled with the spirit. <clears throat> it says, don't be drunk with wine. Now, actually, in some ways, being drunk on on uh, some sort of a med, you know, either self, they say medicating or a, a drug or a, a, a or alcohol or something like that, is is a substitute for what? Be to be filled. He said, "Don't be drunk with wine, but." Be filled, being filled constantly, all the time, all the time. Be filled with Him. So we weren't designed to be empty. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> See, we we have to we have to let God let God fill us to overflowing with the the atmosphere of heaven. And it's very real. And that's on the inside of you if you're born again, if you know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, you need to ask him to come into your heart. And the Holy Spirit will come and fill you with the kingdom of God, which is in the Spirit, which is righteousness, peace, and joy. Righteousness for his nature, peace for his mind and emotions, and joy is your strength for your for your body and 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 got got health and all the wonderful things that come abundance things that come from the presence of God is every good thing so <laughs> being filled with the spirit is and maintaining that uh, you know think of it like how you have to fill your gas tank i mean if you're if you're on empty and and see the thing is we need rest we need certain things for our bodies like this week for me uh, I I just needed a few days, and and uh, I'm taking them still, and and uh, but that's okay. But but let the Lord fill you. And one of the best ways of thinking about that scripture that's one of the few music scriptures in the New Testament. There's not a lot of music scriptures in the New Testament. There's a lot in the Old, a lot more in the Old because David primarily, and others, uh, but David was the great musician of the Bible. Well, uh, he, he says, don't be drunk with wine, which is dissipation. In other words, you, you're, actually, you're actually trading off, you know, I mean, the substitute, it, there's always bad side effects when you're filled with other spirits. Like they even the old name for hard liquor was spirits, right? spirits because there are there there's or there's demonic uh, spirits and they and the intoxication always comes with a uh, with with something uh, bad that will put you in bondage because but the desire to be filled is a good thing so if you are if you are just a a, <laughs> a deadhead christian if you're just a religiously minded Christian, but you're filled with torment and fear and and you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. That's a different spirit. Well, how do we get filled? Well, think of it, and he says, through what? Through songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. You have to sing. <laughs> or more more like, remember those like old teapots, you know? Remember <laughs> they used to, uh, I guess they still have teapots, I'm sure. Well, what would happen is uh, when the water gets heated and uh, and it begins to whistle. Because why? Because the, it, the result of abiding in the Holy Spirit is you get filled. And what will come out of you is singing and and praise and worship and joy. It'll bubble up out of you. And that is where our life is. And if there's ever a time when we need to be, uh, our t needs to sing, it's right now. And the wonderful thing about that is, 
If that's flowing through you, uh, depression can't flow through you. Hallelujah. So it's all about let God fill you with the Holy Spirit. That's what he's saying tonight as I'm reading. So I just, I, I guess I preached it. Uh, yeah. Okay, so the Spirit is the searcher of the deep things of God. Remember, he's a person. He's the teacher of the church. And he knows the mind of God. And he reveals that mind of God to the individual child of God. So he'll tell you... Uh, what you need to know. He'll talk to you. God is alive and he wants to communicate by his spirit to you. This perfectly agrees with what Yeshua said in John 16, that the Holy Spirit was to convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment, and that he was <clears throat> to guide us into all truth, for he should not, and that he would not speak from himself or about himself. He doesn't. Uh, but of whatsoever things he heard, these shall he speak, and he shall declare unto you even the things that are to come. That's the prophetic ministry. But he'll talk to you about different things, remind you of the good things God has promised you. So whenever God is speaking, the Holy Spirit will repeat what the Spirit is saying to not only collectively to the churches and to the church and to the people, all the people of God, but individually, he'll tell you what God is saying to you. And it's all about love. He's in love with you. Hallelujah. <laughs> and he shall glorify me, for he shall take of mine, Jesus said, and shall declare it unto you. In these ministries, the Holy Spirit reveals an intellect that thinks and guides. In Romans 15.30, Paul speaks of the love of the Spirit. And in Romans 5, 5, he says that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Did you know all, all God's love is already deposited? That very love that he loves the whole world with and he loves you with, and he, that love is deposited in your in your spirit or your heart, the, the core of your being, when you're born again. Jesus uh, takes out the hard heart and the selfish and the... So there's, if you're born again, the, the nature of sin and death is not deep in your heart anymore. You don't have fear and dread and, and hatred and lies. And those things have been removed from your heart. That doesn't mean that uh, see, the enemy tried to, to get you to think and feel in your outer man like those things might be there. But the truth is, God took out the satanic nature out of you, and he moved in himself, and he's living there. <laughs> and he made you new to be a son or daughter just like Jesus. And it's by the Spirit that these things manifested. We want to experience that, right? We want our teapot to sing. <laughs> well, the way you get your teapot to sing is to start singing. <laughs> and after a while, your teapot will start to sing because the Holy Spirit will join with you. But he's your helper. He, he doesn't take over like a devil would or a demon would to possess and then control and drive you to do something. No, the Holy Spirit is the ultimate gentleman. He is such a gentleman uh, in the sense that you have to invite him. You have to invite him. And he's, he's, uh, he's so tender and he's easily hurt. He's like a, a child that can easily be hurt. Uh, if, if, and once, and a lot, a lot of believers, bless our hearts, we don't know it, we're just young, or we're 
immature, whatever, we, we, uh, we grieve the Holy Spirit because we don't understand his ways or we override those gentle uh, leadings and impulses. And when we do, uh, that's why there's, there's uh, a lot of carnality. There's a lot of selfishness within the Christian communities and because we haven't learned how haven't learned how to really yield to the Holy Spirit. And now, I mean, I always think of that same quote that <clears throat> it was in a, I think it was in a Holy Spirit, I, it was before my, my time, but uh, Catherine Kuhlman, uh, when she was in the Conference of the Holy Spirit in 1974, I believe, in Jerusalem. And she had this amazing, uh, amazing uh, 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 message. And, you know, she was very dramatic and she had those sleeves and the white, you know, and, uh, and the white dress and everything. But she'd say, God is not asking for golden vessels. And she'd always do that. God, he's not asking for silver vessels. He's asking for ye yielded vessels. And she would talk about abandoning yourself moment by moment to uh, just empty, abandoning yourself to let the Holy Spirit, his personality even, his very nature, you have to yield from the inside and you have to make a choice all the time. That's the cross. That's the inner cross we're to take up. Not my will, Lord, your will be done. And then the then the very nature, that love of God that's shed abroad in our hearts, it's by the Holy Spirit. He'll rise up in you. And then you'll, you'll you know, and, and it's amazing to me. I'm always so amazed at how the Lord will take over if you'll just yield. Yield and, and surrender. Part of yielding is surrendering. You, you yield from the inside. It's not so much a mental exercise. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna try to do this. No, it's not a matter of that. It's, it's learning how to be honest from the inside of the little child in you that you really are. That's the part of you that's genuine. Okay, a lot of adults have. They don't even know who they are anymore because they've been pretending for so long. And that's, that's what the face of Christian religion is. It's the mask. Hypocrisy means you know, wearing a mask. Well, this kind of mask is a, it, it, it's hiding. You're not yielding from the real part of you because it's vulnerable and you're too scared to do that because you've been hurt or whatever. Well, we have to learn how to, is it, it, you have to become like a little child. You have to do that. Uh, if you don't do that, and, and you know what? Uh, what, will people make fun of you sometimes? Yeah, oh sure. But the one thing they'll know is you're genuine. That really is you, it's not, uh, you know, you don't need to see a pretend uh, Maurice, you know, pretend, okay. I, you know, there's no business like show business, you know, you <laughs> put on a big show. Well, I've seen a lot of Christian shows in the last 35 years. And honestly, I, I would rather just see Jesus in you. I want to experience but when the holy spirit when it's genuine and that mask comes off sometimes it'll just come off for a for just a glimpse of a minute you know just and and you see just for a second you see in somebody who's so afraid that you're not, you're not you'll never hurt me i'm hiding behind my this mask this armor i'm i'm super you know I'm Wonder Woman or something. I'm some super hero. And, well, the problem with that is the Holy Spirit never hooks up with 
with the pretend, <laughs> pretend Christian. It doesn't. And, 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 and so we get a religious substitute and then we wonder why there's no power, why there's no, what, what is it that feeds, what is it that feeds the lambs? What is it that feeds the young ones and old ones, all of us? Is, is the genuine, the, the, the actual moving of the Holy Spirit. That moving requires someone to take the mask off, totally take it off, and and say, expose what really is inside. That's scary, and but Satan will fight that so much because that's where the glory is. The glory, the real glory, not the, I don't know, I mean, the glory we're all talking about, you know? The, this is the time of the glory, the glorious outpouring, the. It never comes through uh, pretending, <laughs> because then it's like, and then so the Holy Spirit stands off. You missed His leading, maybe you, you you didn't you didn't yield or something, or maybe, or or we we've got become so callous we don't even think of Him. So when you when when you come in to a meeting, let's say a worship, you're a worship leader or whatever, you're, you're, you're going to be in the band and you're going to sing or something and, you know, or you're going to play an instrument or, <clears throat> but, uh, the problem is if you're doing it, then you don't need God and the Holy Spirit, very often he stands back and he watches us do the best we can do in our, and some people are better than others, you know, and all that. But what makes it wonderful is when this one, this wonderful person is invited in and he starts playing or he starts singing and he starts worshiping. And you can't fake this. But, and you know who knows the fake? You know who can smell out the fakes the fast, the, I mean, the hypocrisy? It's the world. They, they, they smell the stink a lot faster than most Christians. Most of us have been in a pretend world anyway, and we wouldn't know the Holy Spirit. I mean, Kenneth Hagin would say it in his Texas way. He'd say a lot of pastors wouldn't know the Holy Spirit if he went, you know, uh, <laughs> walk up straight up the center aisle of their church uh, blowing off, dressed in a Santa Claus suit and blowing off two six guns still wouldn't recognize the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they don't have a relationship with him. Not one every day. See, this is a 24-7 thing. I didn't know I was going to talk about that. But this is what makes, the, without the Holy Spirit, we don't have a chance. Not in this wretched, wicked world uh, who has rebelled against God. But see, what, what they need to experience, they, all they need, you know what? All the lost need, those that are, all they need is first of all to see just a glimpse out of a, a believer, just a glimpse for a second and taste Taste something sweet from God. What's that? Wait, wait. Oh, it was, it was, and they go to a whole service maybe, and they get one little taste of a fruit of, say, peace or, or uh, wisdom or, or something. Oh, and this is, this is the process. This is how people get saved. This is how. This is what this is really what happens. Yes, we we have to hear the gospel. We have to hear the message. You must call upon the name of Jesus to be saved. But he doesn't become real until the Holy Spirit touches us and and there is something there that they taste off of your tree, your spirit tree. You're a tree, you know. <laughs> You've got fruit on you. And some of us have very bad 
uh, or uh, bitter fruit. Some of us don't have any fruit, just leaves. Some of us, because you can't fake it. It's love, it's, it's the real thing. It's God's. You have to have this relationship 24 seven. It has to be, you know where you really prove it is in your, say, in the home life or in with your spouse, say, or it, they know. You're with them all the time. They know the real you. I mean, you can't put on a show for them, not for very long. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, but if you start yielding from your inner man and let the Holy Spirit start loving through you, let him do it. And so, well, I, I didn't, I want to, I'll go on in just a little. I have to share something with you. Can I share something from my heart now? I, again, you know, this might seem, I want to show you something Devorah gave to me. Happy anniversary card. I didn't know how to get cards and stuff, and I would, and I didn't buy presents for a long time and this year I changed probably because y'all were praying for me but this year I began to understand well I just didn't grow up with it and it was you know but anyway but I got this card I want to show it to you this card is right here where I see it all the time now this was uh December uh, 11 my anniversary and it says to my husband, our marriage has taught me so much about what love really is. And if you want to know who we really are, that's about how old we are. This is Maureen, this is Vivi. <laughs> I've all don't embarrass my wife now. Don't tell her. I, I don't probably. We don't. We're about six years old. <laughs> Something like that. I didn't. I. That part of me never really grew up because I couldn't. It wasn't safe. So I had to pretend. But. It's believing in what we have. It's laughing our way through the best and helping each other through the worst. It's loving each other for everything we are and knowing we were meant to be together. Dear Schnazis, it's you and me, and it's amazing. Happy anniversary. Let me tell you a secret. We never get beyond being little children. I've said that a number of times here, but you never get beyond being a little child. And if you get away from being a little child, you've put your mask on, you've forgotten, you've forgotten who you were. Part of you, because I, there's a scripture for it, the very last, there's a, the very last scripture in uh, 1 John. It says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. God's, that are fake gods, not real gods. The real God made little children. <laughs> and so a lot of us grew up and we, we learned that we couldn't be who we really are because if we, if we show anybody who we really are, uh, we'll get hurt again. And I can't stand the pain of that. Well, until you, until you understand that Jesus, he, now, doesn't mean you won't get hurt, but he'll heal you up. You can go back to him and get healed up when you're hurt. How did I get over here? Well, I'm talking about having a relationship with the Lord. The first thing you have to do is go into the core of your being and understand that's the part of you <laughs> that God is relating to. He's, he's not, he doesn't have a relationship with the facade Christian man or woman. 
the facade man, the one we present to the world. And that is why there's so little demonstration of the spirit because we've left being authentic and we become uh, plastic type people. And you might, you might feel safe, but the truth is nobody can eat any good fruit from the Holy Spirit off your tree because they, they don't have access to you. They, you just, you're the shiny store front. You're the showroom floor car. Look, I don't have any, I don't have any, anything wrong. I'm, I'm, I got it all together. I'm, I'm trying to live this life and the whole time inside, the Holy Spirit is in you and he's weaving because he really loves you. He, he wants to meet your, he wants to really help you, but you have to keep pretending. You have to be this other person or else. Well, that is the world of religion right there. It really isn't about even so much, you know, okay, I'm, well, I, I, it is about doctrine in the sense and truth and God honors his word and all those things. Uh, we have to, we have to be lined up with you know, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. But when we, I tell you what, I've never once <clears throat> opened up and took a risk, even if I'm ministering, say, and I say, well, this is what I'm really like. Never once have I done that without God coming in like a freight train because it's usually showing a vulnerability or showing something that, well, yeah, that's me. And that's where, that's where people can, that's where it's at. What made Jesus so beautiful was there was no facade man. <laughs> there was no, not, you know, those that are supposed to be possessed with truth and walk in love and, and have the nature of we, the truth is you have the nature of there Jesus Himself is on the inside of you. So, but how does He come out? Well, uh, this is a secret. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians. Paul gave, gives the great secret. You want to be, you want to be Wonder Woman. Shh, you know. You want to do, you do all those things and be exploits and all that. Do do the, I don't know, all that stuff. I mean, do you want to really accomplish something spiritually? Well, uh, the first thing you've got to do is exactly the opposite of what the flesh tells you to do. The flesh, we have an idea of this sort of super duper celebrity, uh, Wonder Woman type of, or superhero type Christians, you know, that we're, that we've got to be, you know, and, and some of us have been marinated in perfectionism for so long, like me, and I had to learn that my worth has nothing to do with how close to perfection I get. And that was, took me a long time to get that. But we, we, I just fell into a vein right now, <laughs> a good vein. It's a gold, there's gold in the vein. I mean, in the, uh, like a, a stream, a good stream. But Paul said it this way, I glory in my infirmities so that the power can rest upon me. I glory, and that word infirmities <clears throat> That's the whole message of Second Corinthians. I glory in my infirmities. What does that mean? It means I actually celebrate the fact of that I, I even of weakness. He says I glory. The word infirmities in the Greek breaks down to mean 
weaknesses imposed upon us because of this body of flesh, because of who we are, what we, you know, that we are not in our glorified state yet. Uh, I know some Christians think they are. <laughs> I mean, yes, we are glorified in physicianly, but we also wear these bodies. We have this treasure in earthen vessels, clay pots. We're, we've got this, this hybrid existence. Well, what, how, how do, you know, some of these, well, how can I really, how can I really, you know, I want to, I want to be anointed, you know, I want to be anointed. That was sort of the magic word, at least a while back, you know, still it's a wonderful word. You want to be anointed, it's God's empowering. I want the power to rest upon me, okay, the, the supernatural ability. I want the Holy Spirit to really flow through me tangibly so that Jesus mirac miracles, and that's the key. We have to demonstrate to this fallen world that God is alive and he loves you and he's, he's real and he has power and he's, and we've got to we've got to reach their hearts. How are you going to reach someone's heart? Not with the facade, man. You can't do it. And it's and some a lot of a lot of Christians are so broken inside, and they're in survival mode, and they haven't realized that the, their very the thing they're trying to hide. Why are you hiding? Stop hiding. Uh, the hiding uh, is actually hiding Jesus. You're it, hidden in your infirmities. <laughs> hidden in there is God. That's where Jesus is. And he said, I glory in, he says, in fact, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. His grace is made perfect, what? In our weakness. Well, I'm not making a religion out of being weak. I believe in being strong. The Bible says, be strong in the Lord. But it's in the Lord that you're strong. And you have to enter into that place of weakness so you can receive the strength. And that process is something that we can celebrate instead of, say, try to hide it. Try to hide. Okay. I, I. You won't get anything out of me if I'm just doing my own show, if you will, or whatever. I mean, you won't get... What you need is the Jesus in me, and he's in the brokenness. He's in that, he's in that shattered... The part that was shattered is the part that God builds make something beautiful out of and we all know that inside we all know that i mean, and you can i tell you you can go into the world and you can get the the most hardened sinner heathen you know demon possessed witch or whatever i mean and uh if they taste the real jesus and they see it that somehow shining out of your broken pot At least they may say, well, I don't believe in all that Bible stuff, but he's different or she's a, they're real. That's the first thing they'll say, they're real. And if you're not real, then you're turning off a whole lot of people that you shouldn't. And the truth is, even if you look like, you know, if I admit that, then everybody will run over me. No, that's the secret. Because when you are in that place, that's when God comes. And my goodness, does God, can God put on a show? Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah, he's the ultimate showman in that. Not, I mean, he's the ultimate performer. He's the great. He, he, he's, he's very dramatic. He likes 
creative drama. <laughs> Just look at the situation we're in right now. End of the year 2020. Oh no, what are we going to do now? God said, finally, my church, <laughs> the, at least they're on their knees and they're crying out because they realize, <laughs> yeah, you need me. So we need the Holy Spirit, okay? And we need a real relationship with the one who loves us the most, who has the answers. He lives not far away. He lives right here, right here, right here. You don't need a new revelation or some sort of new experience. And yes, God wants to give you experiences if you could handle them. A lot of Christians can't handle supernatural experiences. They would fall apart like a $2 watch. <laughs> There's such a thing anymore because because we can't handle the, the because of, of the warfare and things like that. The so supernatural experiences. God is the God of the supernatural. You know, I want to go to heaven. Do you want to drink the cup? I mean, I'll go to heaven. I, I want to experience. I want to see angels. I want to, I want to, you know, ride on the heavenly roller coaster. Well, okay, yeah, you will. But the thing, the thing about that is, uh, you've got to be able to. You, you, you have to have the inner strength to handle that God, God would, he cares for you, but most of us don't have a foundation in our spirit that we can handle living in both worlds at the same time. So most of us just live in the natural and endure till the end and pretend and that's not the life of faith. There's actually a real, there is a place of glory. There is a place where you can live, where you can experience the abundant life on earth, yes. <clears throat> the only way is the love way. How did I get over here when I'm trying to read to you? <laughs> I don't know, and I've gotta to get to a stopping place. This is, Fortunately, a pretty short chapter, so I'm just going to finish reading this, but, or maybe, I don't know. What I do know is this. <clears throat> I know that if you'll be honest with God, that's when you'll hear him. You know, one of the greatest prayers that we could ever pray sometimes is, Help! God hears that prayer. He hears the prayer for help. But he doesn't play our religious games. And if you hear, if you're hearing nothing right now, okay, most likely the reason for that is you're under so much oppression and the fear, you're on the wrong channel. You're just... You're, you're, it's not that God isn't talking, it's that you are in a place where you don't believe. And as soon as you don't believe, then it cuts you off from the very communication. If you don't believe, God will talk to you. He says, see, everything is by faith. And that's another thing about this movie, I wanna say. <clears throat> there is, I said, this is the, this is the new age, this is the Mystery Babylon religion I'm hearing here. This crazy man uh, is uh, saying, you know, just make a wish and something, make a wish and then you get it, you know, or whatever. Well, <clears throat> the idea, and the idea is this. This is what's being, this is, this is the Kool-Aid in it. This is the lie that's mixed in with, with some truth. <clears throat> See, you've been, you've watched probably hundreds of movies, say, in your life. I don't know. But, <clears throat> um, and they basically, it's the same moral message. It's a, it's a, it's the same moral. You know, it's not what you believe. It's just 
believe. Okay, if you believe, if you can believe, believe in yourself. Believe in, believe. no, you have to believe in Jesus or your nature will never be changed. You have to be born again. You have to believe not in idolatry, either of yourself or devils or some some stone that you make a wish over and, and then it'll make you have all kinds of power and magic and all this. That's witchcraft. That whole movie from beginning to end was full of witchcraft. That's why I cannot recommend it. And uh, so we're being saturated in a kind of witchcraft, but we do live, <clears throat> the truth is we do live in a voice activated universe and we do live in <clears throat> uh, a world that, uh, that God is a faith God. So you have to, Speak, you have to believe and say, you have to, you can't function any other way. However, uh, you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What spirit are you of? Are you filled with the spirit from the world to come? Are you filled with a Jezebel witchcraft spirit? Well, I see a lot of that masquerading as Christian faith, and it's not, or whatever, or just worldly, you know, just, just, you know, if you can believe, nothing's impossible. If you can believe. Well, it's not just if you can believe. You are believing. Are you believing truth or are you believing lies? See, a lie will damn your soul to hell. The truth is Jesus. The truth is a person. And God's word is the only discerner for natural man. And the Holy Spirit will confirm what is true, what is false. But what spirit are you of? That's, anyway, so trying to, well, I, what I'm going to do is, let me just at least get to a stopping spot here. And we'll we'll stop at eight because I'm so used to going. Excuse me. I dropped my dropped my bookmark there. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so you can't get anywhere with God if you're not being true to him. <laughs> God dwells in truth, real truth, not not uh, witchcraft truth not twisted truth. Okay. <clears throat> in Romans 15.30, Paul speaks of the love of the Spirit. And in Romans 5.5, 5, he says that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. By these scriptures, <clears throat> we infer that the Holy Spirit is the channel through which this new, wonderful love nature of God is revealed to the individual members of the body of Christ. See, there's not different paths to God. And it's so, well, it's this, see, what's the religion is every other way but Jesus is the religious. Or you, well, you know, you can get there as many paths to God. Well, that's been, that's been pounded into you since you were a little baby. It's been brainwashed into you. Uh, you know, and what's genuine is how I feel. Well, how you feel has nothing, very little to do with truth most of the time. Truth is a person. He said, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Again, in 1 Corinthians twelve eleven. Paul says that these various gifts are distributed severally, even as he wills. In other words, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit has the guidance and the plans for the church. It's God's will, not man's will. And he gives to one man the gift of wisdom, to another the gift of knowledge, to one the gift of healing, 
and to another the gift of tongues. But if he divides these as he pleases, but he divides these as he pleases, for his will is sovereign. <clears throat> Jesus has honored the Holy Spirit by giving him a position of equality with the Father, not as a spirit that emanates from the Father, but an individual personality who has intellect, sensibilities, and will. We believe the Holy Spirit to be a person. Well, he is, <clears throat> with a capital P. The Holy Spirit is not an emanation from the Spirit of God. God is a person with intellect, sensibilities, and will. He's personal. By way of illustration, <clears throat> we speak of the spirit of a man. That spirit cannot leave a man. It is a part of his personality. The scriptures speak of the spirit of Christ. If a man has not the spirit of Christ, of Messiah, he is none of his. The Spirit of Messiah mentioned here is not the Holy Spirit, but it is Messiah's own spirit, a part of his own individual personality. That is, that is, we are born again. We have the person of Messiah in us. The Trinity also, if you will, exists in us in the sense that, um, you know, that God is one, but he functions in this way. This is a little confusing the way he writes this, but it's all right. The Holy Spirit is a distinct being, a personality distinct from God the Father and God the Son. He's the one that interacts with us as believers every, every moment, all the time. Operating in his own sphere, having his own personality, the Holy Spirit is different from the Father and the Son in this respect. The Son now has a human body and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and the Father holds his place on the eternal throne. The Spirit's special place of activity today is on earth, convicting of sin, holding back the powers of darkness, recreating members of the family of God through, through uh, the new birth in Jesus and guiding, comforting, and indwelling their bodies. The Holy Spirit's home is the human body. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. <clears throat> See, so when you... When you see all this deception and error, like, uh, you know, this flood of, of confusion and error, like that, that movie I saw last night, Chaos, and, uh, you know, the first thing you have to do is, what spirit is this of? The Bible says, don't believe every spirit. Many antichrist spirit or many demons, false spirits, Lying spirits, messages are coming forth in the world. The, the spirit that confesses that Messiah has come and his name is Jesus in the flesh. And he, in other words, there is a spirit of truth. That, excuse me, that is the Holy Spirit. You have to test the spirits to see whether they be of God. Well, how can I do that? Well, you have to discern it through the indwelling presence of God in you, not an idea of this new age, inner light type, you know, oh well. Uh, no, it, there is, there is the, the Holy Spirit is God and is the spirit of truth, absolute truth, and it will always, always, always line up with what the Bible says. And you can judge all things. God has not made it difficult to test the spirits. Find out. Now, if you don't, if you don't have, 
If you haven't read the Bible, then you're wide open. If you don't have any relationship and you've never given your heart to Jesus, then you're like a, a drowning uh, a drowning human being uh, ready to perish. And the only way out for you is to call upon the name of Jesus. Call upon him, Lord, save me. Save me. Well, how are you saved? By calling upon his name, believing in him. You must be born again spiritually. See, that is a fundamental... See, there's, so there's a lot. There's a lot of alternative lying voices trying to get you. What does Satan want? He wants your worship. He wants you to worship him however he can get it. He want, and, and that means whatever's first place in your heart, that's the God you worship. Some people worship their own giftedness, you know, and, uh, you know, someone who's a very smart person or gifted or talented or very, some people worship their power and greed and the wealth. And some people worship, uh, you know, uh, some sort of religious or spiritual experience. Or uh, there's a lot of people, particularly younger people, they worship their feelings. If they feel a certain way, then that must be true. But, but what are we supposed to do? Uh, it's this book here. <laughs> this book is... Whoops. Sorry. This book here is the foundation. The Bible is the foundation, the plumb line of truth. And you're not going to get anywhere with God until you come to Him on the basis of His Word, His truth, his way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. In the Old Testament times, the Holy Spirit's work, as indicated in the scriptures, was in creation, renewing the face of the earth, inspiring men to write, the holy oracles of God, which are in this book here, and no other book. There's no other book like it. There isn't, you know, well, what holy book do you like? What, what makes your liver quiver, you know, or something? No, it's not about that. What, what appeals to you as if it's some sort of a competing brand? No, no, there is, there is one one source of truth and the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth which means he'll lead you right to that book <clears throat> hallelujah and coming the Holy Spirit coming upon men also the Holy Spirit comes on for special operations and special works of might and leadership his permanent home then was in the tabernacle Afterward, the temple, the Holy Spirit did not make his permanent abode in the body of man then because man was spiritually dead, a child of the devil, though he lived under the blood covenant and was sheltered, sheltered by the atoning blood of the animals in Abraham's covenant. He could not make his home in the human body human body until man had been recreated. This could not take place until Messiah had come and paid the penalty of sin, taken his seat as mediator, and sent eternal life to the men who would take him as Savior. The Holy Spirit's work today is first, that of a convictor of the sin of the world. He does this through the preached word, through the living word in the lives of believers, through the written word, the scriptures, and other anointed books and literature. His work 
in the individual members of the family of God is that of a teacher, a guide, a comforter, an overcomer, and a sanctifier. The Holy Spirit's real home is in the heart of God's children, but he does not come into every believer at the new birth. The new birth is receiving the life, the nature of God. Well, the, the in, he does. The Holy Spirit does, does enter into. You can't be born again without being born of the Spirit. Yeah, so that I don't know what he means here, but that's not quite correct. But there is an infilling of the Spirit, many infillings. And, and that I need that every day. Sometimes I'll pray, Lord, uh, fill me with your grace today and I can live abundantly. I pray that nearly every day, uh, especially when I need strength because God's strength and grace is made perfect in this weak, uh, weak life. God comes and he strengthens me. He gives me grace. He fills me with his spirit and I can do all things through that the, the spirit of Messiah who lives within me. So the new birth is receiving the life, the nature of God. This makes him a child of God and a human temple of the Holy Spirit to indwell. After he is born again, he has a legal right to ask the Holy Spirit to come into his body and fill him, baptize him, immerse him, and to take full possession of him. All right. And I, I am going to stop now. And I tried to keep it to an hour, but I went over. And got, anyway, right now, the battle we are having in the earth is a battle for truth. For truth. You know, I mean, and again, because that movie, I don't know. You can learn lessons from things. And the, the, the Wonder Woman has that belt of truth, you know, and all that, which also looked like witchcraft to me. <laughs> but uh, truth isn't a belt. <laughs> truth is a person. <laughs> truth. But there's so much deception. And that is the foundation of the end, the, the end times. And, and, and the book, you know, that God gave me was, you know, the... If you really want to see what's going on, Yeshua said the number one, uh, the number one danger of the last days, Luke 21, is many will come in my name saying, I am anointed with the true message from God and or just the truth itself. We have right now uh, a huge uh battle just to find out what's true in the news you you have to you can't accept anything at face value now because it, it, we have been flooded with lies and decoys and you know and then the information with all this knowledge we have we 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 need the spirit of god to lead us into what will the Holy Spirit? He will lead you into all truth. Truth is the great commodity of heaven in these last days. The great treasure is, is to find truth and those who are giving the message of truth. There is a true message. If there's counterfeits left, right, and center and everywhere, there's lots of counterfeit. There must be a genuine somewhere. If there's a counterfeit $100 bill, it must have been copied from a real one. You know, if there's fool's gold, there must be the real thing somewhere. And the, the Holy Spirit, when you get close to Him, He will protect you from deception and lies. And uh, people that are coming saying, I'm... I'm the Messiah, I'm anointed. That's what the word Messiah means, with the true message. And there's a lot of false false prophets and teachers and and a lot of, you know, anything goes and 
compromised and watered down and and that's why uh, I cling you know just like all the rest of the so-called what do they call them uh, deplorables or so I, I'm not deplorable <laughs> I'm God's favorite son <laughs> but I may not be the only one but this book to me he says it's more valuable Psalm 119 than thousands of gold and silver coins and treasures and why because it has life in it it has light that guides thy word is a lamp under my feet a light under my path i shall not walk in darkness jesus said i am the light of the world and he is the word of god the word and the holy spirit agree totally there is no argument and uh and you can see that but the great danger of deception is nobody who's deceived thinks they are deceived <laughs> in fact the more someone gets deceived and warped and you know especially in spiritual things the more they are convinced and they'll try convincing you that they're right and everybody else is wrong in fact I, I would say what will qualify a conspiracy theory, probably the fastest. What's a conspiracy? Like, what, how can you tell? Well, if somebody's spending a lot of time trying to justify how, <laughs> how uh, truthful they are, chances are they're not. But even so, uh, can, I don't live, the Bible doesn't say uh, the just shall live by uh, internet conspiracies <laughs> it says the just shall live by faith and you know stay out of things that stay out of of, of, of the slime pits of deception well how do you know well part of it is if you're baptized in the Holy Spirit you need to pray in tongues pray in those languages of tongues and God wants you to do so because it's another tool so that God can pray his perfect will through you and bypass your mind so that he can pray from the very throne room of heaven God's perfect will on earth. And so I spend a lot of time uh, in, in, first of all, how do, you, how do you recognize if something is true? Well, they, they, they train the bank tellers, you know, when they, back when we had cash, remember that? Cash is a lot harder to come by nowadays. But uh, they would tell them, uh, <clears throat> uh, you don't study the counterfeits, you study the real thing, you handle the money, you smell it, you look and look at it, you, 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 you get familiar with it. Well, you have to, Jesus said it this way, if, if you continue in my word, not in something else, in his word, in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. Then you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So there's a battle for truth. Well, the foundation of physical things are spiritual things. There's a, there is spiritual truth that is the bedrock of reality. And it comes right out of, thus saith the Lord. There is no other, there is no other truth. And uh, God, and as soon as you start hearing compromise, well, what if you do everywhere you look, uh, there's compromise. Well, uh, yes, yes and no. Uh, there is, God always has, he, he said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. So the, there is somewhere that God will lead you to that you can be in a community, even if it's online here, uh, that you can trust and that you're not going to be. And if you if you've been hurt so bad, you can't even you can't even uh, trust anybody anymore. Then you got to go back. You got to go back to the Holy Spirit. Let Him heal you 
and then hallelujah. Well, but in the last days, it says it will get so much deception. We're not in the tribulation yet. Satan's trying to bring us in prematurely. I don't believe that this, uh, this will happen yet. Uh, and I, I'm telling you, well, what do you do? Well, it says, let God be true and every man a liar. I'll still walk with God if I'm the only one, you know. But I'm not the only one, see. And that's the son of the disciples. Oh, Elijah, you know, he said, you know, I'm, I'm the only one. Look at all these prophets of Baal screaming and cutting themselves and calling, you know, oh, Baal, help us, you know. Well, God said, no, you're not. I have 7,000 that haven't bowed the, their knee or kissed the veils. They, so God has his remnant, and with that remnant is rising up, and it's more than a remnant. And uh, you're going to see more and more contrast between truth and deception. And it's going to become so glaring and so obvious, it will provoke persecution. Yes, sir. I have to end with this. The spirit of prophecy just fell on me. So I'm going to end with this. I just take this because the Lord is saying that you're not going to have to wonder what's true. <laughs> it's because it'll be plain as light and darkness. Jesus, in him is light. There is no darkness at all. The Holy Spirit is separating the wicked from the righteous at a pace, an astonishing pace right now. And the world is rapidly growing darker. But my light shall be seen upon you. My glory shall be seen upon you. And it won't be, a, a, it, I'll tell you where it will, what it will get to as uh, this world becomes more and more wicked, persecution. <laughs> uh, uh, there's going to be open persecution in the United States. And uh, when that, we haven't really, we've seen a little bit of persecution, but it'll get to the place where the so-called left or the, the, the wicked uh, will not tolerate, tolerate any truth. And just your existence on the earth will, uh, just the fact that you're here shining and pointing out their their devils in their darkness and they will find you and they will persecute you and you will very quickly in fact the persecution's already begun the lord said on on the sixth on the sixth of january i'm sifting out the hearts of those in government and I am testing them. And if they do not stand, I'm requiring everyone that's in the government to stand up. I'm not, the Lord is saying, and I'm convicting each heart to do so, to object. And if, if they sit down and they're silent, God said they'll be a part of the very destruction that is coming upon idolaters. And those that cannot, uh, that, 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 that refuse the rule of the Lord. And so God is, is, uh, he's, this is a really big deal. This next month, and as we get into, we get past the new year, which is upon us now, we get into 2021, it's going to be, a showdown like you've never seen before. And this is actually a good thing because the darkness cannot hide anymore. They won't just, they won't tolerate the light. They will gnash their teeth and attack it with a ferocity of the, of, because they cannot hide anymore. Because God says, I'm turning up the power. I'm turning up the light it's so bright, it, it hurts their eyes, it blinds them, and it will drive uh, the, the uh, there's coming great, uh, 
great civil disturbance, no matter what happens. It's not about who's so much, although God's, God's using, <laughs> this is it. Welcome to the midnight hour, it's here. You don't have to wait anymore. You won't have to wonder. You won't have to wonder, gee, I wonder, uh, are we are we going to come out of this into some, some sort of a rebirth as a nation? I sure hope so. But what I do see is without the overthrow, the overthrow, the arresting, and the, the, without the, 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 uh, without the, uh, and it will be a violent overthrow of, of, of the, uh, the left. Uh, without that, there could be no justice. And God says, I am the God of justice and I am judging. And just like I did in Egypt, and we're just getting started. That's what I hear the Lord. You're just getting started. You haven't, you haven't seen. And this will culminate finally in what is called the Great Tribulation. The Tribulation, Great Tribulation. It's not yet upon us. But <clears throat> God said, I myself will go. I'm going to Washington. That's why you look. You know, there was a movie. I, who was it that said so and so goes to Washington? <laughs> That was an old movie with, uh, oh gosh, and he was a, uh, you know, he was had a conscience, and he was an attorney or something. You know, and I, so and so goes to Washington. God said, "I'm going to Washington, and I'm going to stand there before that electoral. I'm going to manifest myself right there. Those that stand for me will be marked, and those that stand against me." will be marked. <laughs> and uh, the Lord says, I, I will see to this myself. So something's getting ready to happen. Uh, that, see, God's already, see, you have to, at a certain place, you've got to accept, God, we have prayed, God did hear, he is answering, and uh, God, he's doing it. So I reached that place where I know that God heard. I, I knew it when I, when I heard the shofar blow at the return, shofars. I knew right then, I said, God, this is your battle. And uh, so it's exciting because God never loses and he's taken this up. It doesn't matter whether the the judges, the chief justice, or whoever, they 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 might be refuted, <laughs> but God's taken up this case, and uh, you're going to find out, and they shall know, the Lord says, and they shall know that I am the Lord God Almighty, the Lord of hosts, and He is a judge in all the earth, and that's what uh, Psalm 24 talks about that. Uh, so does Psalm 2. And many of the Psalms talk about the righteous judge who will come and, 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 and the judge of all the earth shall do right. So judgment, justice, mercy, foundation of God's throne. God hasn't, you know, gone away and taken it, taken it, uh, a siesta, a hiatus, or a vacation, or, you know, it's, uh, God hasn't abandoned, God has not abandoned our generation. He's not abandoned this earth. No, he's very, very closely involved with what's going on. Uh, God has not turned over this earth to Wonder Woman or Superman either. Uh, it, it's the same, he's the same God, he's the God of the scriptures, it's all in here, and it's unfolding before our eyes.
Praise the Lord. So this is an exciting time. I, I not, you know, I, I may sound a little, maybe a little, perhaps a little less energy, but there's great fire down in my belly. I have fire in the belly. <laughs> I, I, there's a, a resolve. I feel like just, just, and uh, it's an immovable stone. Uh, God's kingdom, and they just they just destroy themselves and crash up against it. Modern man, twenty first century. A lot of generations crashed on that rock. He is the rock. You know, you won't succeed as God's enemy. That's stupid. All right. Well, listen. I've got to. I got to get going. I tried to do so over, over a half, about a half hour ago, almost. So <laughs> let me just pray for you at least tonight. I I didn't actually plan on this. I didn't even plan on having a, a, a so-called service. I just we will. Um, I I will. Uh, I mean, we're, the anointing's here. And, so I did it anyway. So let me just bless you and cover you now. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord give you his shalom peace. Father, place your name upon your dear ones and those within the sound of my voice now. And may the grace of our Lord, Yeshua the Messiah, the love of God, and <clears throat> the communion, comfort, and the person of the Holy Spirit be yours. May you be kept from deception and come into the fullness of truth, the fullness of life, fullness of light, and may God keep you safe. Be filled with the Holy Spirit right now. <laughs> Be filled to overflowing. God's grace is sufficient for you right now. And you're going to make it. More than make it, <clears throat> we're going to see a triumph. Something that, that right now is hidden from human perspective we can't see it yet <clears throat> but that doesn't mean it's not there and god god is a god of suddenlies and surprises and don't think don't think that you know he just vacated the throne or something he's gone no god didn't leave this earth to a, a, a rope of truth and wonder woman give me a biblical break. <laughs> no, the Lord of hosts is with us. And the king is coming. Praise God. And we shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. All right. Good night, y'all. <laughs> Shalom. So I hope you are blessed. And remember... Uh, and I will pray for you tonight too. I can't. I can't help myself. So between eleven and twelve, <laughs> I'm going to. If you have any prayer requests, and I'll just, I lift up your names before the Lord, and remember also that we do depend upon you for our support. But you've been very. Thank you. Even in the past week, you've given us enough to sustain us through the end of the year. We free. Thank you. Hallelujah. And uh, but remember that, uh, you know, God, God will bless you back abundantly. And I'm beginning to hear testimonies of so, uh, several have, have told me the fin finances and, and how God has blessed your giving. Um, and I am, I'm not going anywhere. Just had to take it easy. And I still will. <clears throat> still will. <laughs> not full throttle, but... The anointing's here, the glory's here, and God doesn't want you 
to be discouraged and give up and go find some cave and store up tribulation food and wait for the end. <laughs> no, that's not God's will. He said, stand, stand. That means you can stand, you can smile too. <laughs> stand and see the salvation of the Lord who is in our midst. The presence of the Holy Spirit is with you. He's with us. Hallelujah. And if God be for us, he's with us and for us. Who can be against us? No one. No devil in hell can stop Almighty God and his great plans and his grand finale. Glory. Woo. It's going to be exciting. And uh, if the Lord, uh, if the Lord asks you to, to help us or from, uh, support us financially, Hallelujah! Give a gift this evening, even. Uh, please do so. Uh, go to uh, Maurice. Sorry, not Maurice Sklar. Sklar Ministries. SklarMinistries dot com. And there's a PayPal button there. You think you can locate that? at the top of the Facebook page as well. And hallelujah. We're going to, as long as, he says, as long as there's light, you labor in the fields. That's what we're doing. Hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus, just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I can't save myself. I believe you are the Messiah. You are the soon coming King. And your word is true. I surrender to the truth of your holy written word and, and Holy Spirit, I want you. You are the spirit of truth. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Change me. I cannot change myself. Make me into the person that you have created me to be. I will no longer remain in rebellion to you and your kingdom. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I receive you as my Savior and my Lord. Make something beautiful out of my life. Thank you for changing me from the inside out. I want to make heaven and miss hell. I don't want to be deceived in this final hour. I run to you and take refuge in you. Jesus, be my Lord. Sit on the throne of my heart. Forgive me and wash me in your precious blood that I may be a son, a daughter, a, your child, Lord. Make me into a faithful servant. In Yeshua's name, amen. Glory to God. All right. <laughs> I'll see you very soon, okay? And so thank you for tuning in. I love you. Uh, good night. Shalom.